I recently had a project where I had to pull clinical information from various patient medical records and combine the text of those medical records into one string field. So in essence, concatenate multiple text lines into one complete line of text. Again, this is a clinical problem, right? So I have to imagine, though, that I'm not the only person that has to do something like this. In fact, if you pull information from social media sites, Twitter, for example, you may have to pull information where it's split into multiple tweets and then combine them back together again. So I'm going to do this like I normally do, where I'm going to show you the end result of, uh, of what I'm trying to do, and then we'll go back and reconstruct this. So um, the end result here is really taking uh, a note, and I've created just three fake notes here, and putting them all, all together on uh, separate lines. But where this came from was a separate set of notes where there's a note ID that tells me which note it belongs to, but then a text ID, which is a sub row underneath that particular note. So in this case, the first note, which says this is the first note, is on three separate lines. Uh, the second one is split into two lines, and then the third one is all together. Now, there's something interesting about the way that I've set this up. I've already included a note ID in here, which will typically be the case for you that you will have an ID associated with a row. If you don't have that, there are ways to be able to create an ID, and I'll take you through that after we look at this first example. So uh, let's go ahead and remove everything that I have. I just wanted to show you sort of what it looks like together. And um, we're going to first start and make an assumption here that the text ID contains the order in which the rows appear. So if we were to imagine that the text ID 10 actually came after 11 in this data set, or it was out of order in your database, we would want to order them. So very simply, we'll use a sort tool and we'll drop that in. And what we'll do is we'll sort by the node ID and then also sort by the text ID. Okay. Now we need to begin the process of trying to combine these together. So we're going to go to the transform menu and choose the summarize tool and drop that into our workflow. And then we are going to group by the note ID. And we're doing that because the note ID is repeating itself for each note that appears. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab the note ID and group by the note ID. And then we want to choose the note text, which is which is the, the, the text in separate rows that we want to concatenate or combine together. So we're going to choose uh, note text, click add, but we're going to go down to the string section. And in the string section, we're going to choose concatenate. And that will put all of the rows together uh, that are grouped by the note ID. So there's three entries for the first note, they'll be combined, two entries for the second one, and one for the third. Now, I'm not going to make any configuration changes. It's not going to look right when we run it. So I'm going to come back and make a configuration change. I just want to show you what the initial output looks like. So we'll go ahead and add a browse tool. And then we'll go ahead and run our workflow. Okay, so now when we look at the output, you'll notice two things. One, it's it's not in the note order, which is not really a huge deal, but we can fix that. And then the second thing is that when it concatenated the fields, it put in a separator here, which is a comma. And um, given that this is text, I don't want there to be a comma in there. So we're going to go back to the summary tool, and we're going to click on the note text entry here for concatenate, and we're going to look down at the bottom. And one of the options we have is to choose the type of separator that we want. In this case, I'm just going to delete the comma and just leave it blank. And now when I do that and I run my workflow, you'll notice that now the comma is gone and uh, there's just, a, there's just a, a, a concatenation, a combination of those rows together. Now there's a couple other things to keep in mind here. One is if your data is truly cut off, like in my case, looking at the clinical data, it was cut off where there might be a space, then I wouldn't want there to be any, uh, any separator between them. However, if you did want a separator in there, um, you could just go to the separator and press space and put in a space. Sometimes I put a pipe symbol in here uh, to delineate where one ends and one starts with maybe like a space before and a space after the pipe. So that's an option. The other part that we want to handle in here is a sort afterwards because it's not in order. Once it summarizes, so we can go in and we can sort by the note ID and then we would get it in order. 
So now we can see uh, if I go to the Browse tool, the first note, second note, third note, and so on. Now I mentioned there are some interesting ways that I set this up to make this kind of easy on myself, which was that there was a note ID here already, and, um, and the text ID, although I'm not using it here, could be useful. Uh, and let's play a scenario out mentally here where maybe that text ID was a date and a time. All right, and we didn't uh, we didn't necessarily know that um, or didn't have them showing up in order. Like in this case, 10, 11, and 12 is, is all in order. And so when I do the summarize, uh, it's going to put this is the first note and it's gonna put it in the correct order. Uh, if this was just a date and a time, I could do it that way. Uh, there are a couple other things we could do too. And so I wanna introduce two tools that might be useful to you. One is the record ID tool. And for this one, we can automatically create a record ID once we've sorted the data and we have it in the correct order, then I can assign a record ID to it and it will become its own field. I can even choose uh, the starting value for that one. The other tool that might be use useful is called the tile tool. Uh, and that one lets us create basically record IDs, but for groups of data. So in this case, if I wanted to, uh, I could say that um, for every record ID or for every note ID, um, I wanna group it by uh, the note ID and create a, a value. So it will create uh, 100, 100, 100, 101, 101, 101, 101, and so on. So you have, uh, you have ways that you can manip manipulate the data. It's hard to create an all-encompassing solution because you may run into different problems depending on how your, your data is laid out. But generally, you're gonna have an ID and you'll at the very least have a timestamp of when it was created. In my case, I'm very lucky because I happen to also get a separate text ID that helps me understand when that particular note was entered and how it gets ordered. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you found this useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's very helpful. I also have another series out that I did on reverse ETL that's very, very interesting, and I suggest you check it out. Uh, there'll be a link that you can click and, uh, and follow it and see if you like that particular series. I'll catch you on the next one.